today we're going to look at a nice non-standard proof of the irrationality of the square root of 2. And there's something nice about this proof. And the niceness comes from the fact that the standard proof actually makes use of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, whereas this non-standard proof will not require the fundamental theorem of arithmetic at all. Okay, so let's see how we can get started. So just like the normal proof, we will do this by way of contradiction. So let's, by way of contradiction, suppose that the square root of 2 is a rational number. And then somehow we obviously want to end up with a contradiction. But if the square root of 2 is a rational number, then that means that we can write the square root of 2 as a over b, where a and b are both natural numbers. That's because square root of 2 is obviously positive, so we can take both of those integers to be um, positive. And next up, we're going to consider the following inequality. So I'll just put note here that we have 1 is most definitely less than 2, which is less than 4. So I think that's pretty obvious. So another thing that I think we can just take as a fact is that the square root of x is an increasing function. So being an increasing function means that if we apply it to all parts of this compound inequality, we don't have to change the inequality at all. Or in other words, the inequality is satisfied. So that tells us that the square root of 1, which is 1, is less than the square root of 2, which is in turn less than the square root of 4, which is 2. Now from here we're going to subtract 1 from all parts of this, seeing that 0 is less than the square root of 2 minus 1, which is less than 1. And this inequality right here will be super important for one of the last steps of this proof. Okay, so now we'll take this term which is in the middle, this square root of 2 minus 1, and we'll take it to the 2 nth power. So we'll look at square root of 2 minus 1, like I said, to the 2 nth power. And we'll do that by using the binomial expansion formula. So the binomial expansion formula is often gone over very quickly in like a calculus one type course and then forgotten about. But it's useful to keep in mind as it comes into use in random places like this. Okay, so anyway, this allows us to write this as the sum as k goes from zero up to two n of two n choose k and then from there, we'll have the square root of 2 to the k, and then minus 1 to the power 2n minus k. Great. And again, like I said, that's just from the binomial expansion formula. And now we're going to split this into even and odd values of k. So I'll say those will be the even values of k. And then the odd values of k will go over here. So let's see, even values of k will run from k equals 0 up to 2n. So that'll be like k equals 0, 2, 4, up to 2n. But we can re-index that to make it go from k equals 0 to n. And then we'll have 2n choose 2k. And then we'll have the square root of 2 to the 2k. But the square root of 2 to the 2k is the same thing as 2 to the kth power, and then we'll have minus 1 to the 2n minus 2k, but that's going to be minus 1 to an even power, which gives us plus 1. And then the odd terms will give us the following. We'll have minus square root of 2, and then we'll have the sum as k goes from 1 up to n of 2n choose 2k minus 1, and then we'll have 2 to the power k minus 1. And again, that's after a little bit of a re-indexing step. And now from here, we'll notice that this guy right here that I'm overlining in orange is most definitely an integer. It's actually a natural number. And then this guy, which I'll overline in yellow, is also a natural number. So that allows me to write this as a plus b times the square root of 2, 
where A is this orange thing, and then negative B is this yellow thing. I've just absorbed that minus sign in there. So that means that A and B are both integers. Great. But now we'll use the fact that we have assumed that the square root of two is rational. So we haven't used that assumption yet. So that means we can rewrite this as A plus B times A over B, where those are lowercase a and b. Again, that's substituting our assumption of rationality in. But now we can add these fractions together and we'll get A times B plus B times A, where we're using upper and lowercase letters as um, appropriate all over B. But now given this thing is positive, we know this thing right here is positive. But then b is a positive integer. That means that the numerator is also a positive integer. So since the numerator is a positive integer, it's bigger than or equal to 1. So that means this whole thing is bigger than or equal to 1 over little b, which is itself bigger than 0. Okay, so now that we've built this inequality right here, we're ready to finish this thing off. So on the last board, we established the following inequality. We have for all natural numbers n, the square root of 2 minus 1 to the 2 nth power is bigger than or equal to 1 over b, where b was that denominator of our rationalization of the square root of 2, but 1 over b is always bigger than 0. So now we're gonna take the limit of this guy right here. So that's gonna give us zero is less than one over B, which is less than or equal to the limit as N goes to infinity of the square root of two minus one to the two N. But now since the square root of two minus one is less than one and we're raising it to larger and larger powers, it's a well-known fact that that will tend towards zero. So that means this limit is equal to zero. But now let's extract a portion of this so we can extract this zero is less than zero. So this leaves us with the conclusion that zero is less than zero, which clearly doesn't make sense. So that's our contradiction. And so what did we contradict? Well, we contradicted this assumption way up here that the square root of two was rational. And thus we must have the square root of two is not a rational number. And that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.